Hi, Shalom friends. One of the remarkable innovations of the Hasidic movement was to expand the concept of a, of a Jewish leader and of a Jewish rabbi. In the past, the rabbi was seen as the spiritual guide of the community, and people would consult with the rabbi with spiritual concerns, whether it be prayer, rituals, perhaps even education of themselves and their children, ritual laws of kosher, and so on. But what happens if a person couldn't pay his rent, or a person perhaps felt a little bit down in, in disposition? You wouldn't go to a rabbi for that. That wasn't his job. But the Hasidic movement introduced that the tzaddik, the righteous man, the, he would be concerned as much with the physical as with the spiritual. And in fact, people related to the Rebbe, the spiritual guide of the Hasidim, not only as a great um, teacher of Torah and of mysticism, but as a loving father and a figure that they could really confide in. So therefore, some of, there was a paradox. Some of the greatest tzaddikim who were so removed from the pleasures and the distractions of this world, yet they were consulted and were able to have a, an insight into the nitty-gritty day-to-day issues that concerned their Hasidim. Okay, with this preamble, let me tell you a story of the Holy Magad of Kajnitz, Rabbi Saul Hopstein, the Kajnitz of Magad. One day, a couple appeared in his office, and uh, middle-aged, and you could tell right away that the husband was a bit uncomfortable, so the wife took the lead. She said, Rebbe, we're here because we have a problem. And she began to cry. She said, my husband, my husband doesn't look at me anymore. My husband told me clearly he wants to go away. He wants to divorce me. And the Rebbe looked at the husband and said, and uh, is what your wife's saying correct? And defiantly, she, he said, yes, it is correct. And the Rebbe like, shrugged the shoulder, like, why would you want to do that? And he says, well, she's not attractive anymore. She, she does, I'm not attracted to her anymore. And I, I'm not, I don't have to stay married to her. And when he said those words, I'm not attractive, she began to say, what? I'm not attractive to you? When we stood under the wedding canopy, you whispered to me then that I'm the most beautiful lady you've ever seen. And in the 15 years of marriage, I've been loyal, I've been faithful. We have four beautiful children. What do you mean I'm not attractive? I was attractive then and now I'm not attractive anymore? And when the Rebbe was hearing this, he said, Sie ist gerecht. Sie ist gerecht. She's right. She's right. And though he was in the office with this couple, he addressed himself not to the couple, but to the Almighty, and said to the Almighty, She's right. When we, the Jewish people, stood by Mount Sinai, and we got married to you under the chuppah, were we not the most beautiful nation on earth? And now that 3,000 years have passed and almost 2,000 years of exile, and we've been loyal and we've been faithful, are we still not attractive to you? Could it be, God forbid, that you would justify going away from us because we're not as beautiful? And he turns to this, the husband. She is attractive. She is attractive. She's just tired. Treat her nicer, and you will see once again the attractiveness. And by saying that, he was actually imploring God, take us out of exile, and you will see how the Jewish people, how beautiful they are. Their, their hearts are, will be overflowing with love for you and devotion towards you. The story, whether or not it happened exactly the way I said it or very similar, the message is clear when the beauty that the Jewish people have to God is, should be as beautiful as it was in the days of the temple. But you say, well, we're not doing as much as the past. Everyone has a story about a grandfather or a grandmother that was positively saintly. 
And even amongst the observant today, are we on that level? And the answer is, we're tired. It's been a long haul. It's not been easy. 3,300 years since God gave the Torah on Mount Sinai, and we've gone through a lot. It's been a very long day. I mean, would you truly expect your wife to be dressed beautifully and perfumed and with all of the cosmetics on after a long day? You could excuse her for, for the way she looks because she's a beautiful lady who's very tired and overwhelmed. Give her three maids. Take care of all of the things that she takes care of and then, yes, she'll wear a nice dress for you and put on lipstick. We could say the same thing about Yiddishkeit. Hashem, take us out of exile and you'll see how we'll pray, how we'll study, and how we'll do all the rituals. So the Rebbe, of course, is right. But I would like to add one PS to the story. We could understand why our attractive spouses sometimes look so tired at the end of the day. But I have a question for you. What happens if you tell your spouse of 15 years, one year, 60 years, you say, my dear beloved wife, I want to celebrate with you. You've been the most devoted and faithful and beautiful wife a man can ever ask for. I have great love, and I'd like to express it to you. So we're going out, and then we're going to go on a vacation. And she looks at him, and her face brightens. That's wonderful. And then, as it gets closer and closer to the date, and he keeps putting out uh, hints, why? Wouldn't it be nice in three weeks from now? Or, you know, I've been looking through the travel brochures. I'm sure we're going to have a nice time. And there's no response. And he begins to wonder, is his wife as crazy about him as he is about her? And he keeps saying, well, she's preoccupied. She's preoccupied. Don't forget, next Tuesday, next Tuesday, that's, that's when we begin. And he comes home on Tuesday and there's no valise, and there's no makeup, and there's no smiling wife, just the same as every other day. Here already, it's hard to say that she's just plain tired. There is a date. On the contrary, show you're excited about it. Show that you're gratified. Show that you're anticipating it. So now let me put it in terms of the Jewish people. God says, I'm going to bring you the Mashiach. When? Today. In our lifetime. And he keeps giving us hints. It's never been better. More sick people are becoming recovered. Economically, there are less, there's much less poverty amongst Jews. There's less anti-Semitism. We can do mitzvahs. On many, many levels, there are not even such subtle hints, real hints, that God is watching over us, caring about us, making miracles for us, and He's telling us, you know what? I want to go on a date. I want to take you on a trip to Israel forever, where we could celebrate our devotion towards one another. Don't you think He would like the Jewish people to put on a little makeup? to add just a little bit of more enthusiasm in Torah and mitzvahs. So it's true, the Koshen Samagad is right. If Hashem saw us the most beautiful of all the nations by Mount Sinai, years and thousands of years are not going to change that. We're still the most beautiful. But come on, I want to go out and celebrate with you. Now is not the time to be exhausted. Now is the time to show enthusiasm. Well, the challenge and the opportunity awaits us. Shalom. <laughs>